So, hey, Kevin, thanks for coming on here, man. I appreciate it. We're here to talk about Surf Brigade. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to let you talk more about it, but I appreciate what you're doing in this regard. I know it's a veteran-focused uh, endeavor. So, yeah, so tell us about it. Tell us about Surf Brigade, and let's just go from there. All right. Well, thanks for having me again. Um, I was happy to be on your show talking about my own uh, war stories in the past, and I've enjoyed listening to all of the other really great guys who have been on here. Um, and thanks for continuing to do this. For a lot of us, it, it is uh, something I think that we find enjoyable and maybe o also some comfort in listening to others. And it's remarkable how uh, some guys who I've known for 20 years come on your show and share their stories. And I'm like, how the hell have I never heard that story before? Right. <laughs> uh, but it goes to show that we probably all have a lot of stories that maybe we don't share with um, others, even guys who are really close to us. But as a lot of us move beyond the military, um, and you and I were talking about this earlier, I think it's important to um, get comfortable with those stories and sort of catalog them so they don't get away from us as we get older, because they're important pieces of who we are as individuals. But I'm happy to be on here to talk to you about Surf Brigade today. Um, and what we're going to do is talk about the path that took us here, um, tell you guys about our program, the organization, and then what the future looks like. And I hope by the end of this, it brings education to what surf therapy is capable of across the veteran community. And anyone who wants to get involved knows where they can do that. So I'm going to go way back here for you and tell you that since I've retired, I've done uh, quite a bit of probably analysis on my own um, military life. And I think it's important that we all do this. And what I realized is um, there were, there are chapter markers, thing, you know, periods of time throughout my military career where I could tell I was really advancing um, it, it, in all different aspects of life. And one of them for me was when I left Fort Benning in 2010 and PCS to Hurlburt Field, I had just finished seven combat deployments in seven years. And, you know, these six of those were task force um, deployments and they were what is probably considered really high intensity deployments. Yeah. And when I, I thought that, man, life is going to get really good, really fast when I come off the line and I go to an instructor position by the beach for three years. <laughs> and it seemed to be what it seemed to be the dream really. Yeah. And when I got to Hurlburt Field, it kind of went the other way. And some things in hindsight um, were not going really well. In my personal life, in my career, I was not performing to my full capacity. And I think that because I had such a high baseline for ops tempo and adrenaline um, at that time, when I was in a comparatively administrative role, I was doing a lot of things that other guys do that at the time, none of us would think anything of. I bought a motorcycle. I was, you know, ripping around on that as fast as I could with no helmet. I was skydiving um, on the weekend at drop zones with no PPE. And nobody was telling me that I was wrong doing it because everyone else was right where I was, right. you know, in the head. I mean, we were all, that's where we all were at that time. But I was lucky at that time that I had a PJ, a TACP, and a CCT that I worked with who all surfed that invited me out to go surfing. And they took me out. And uh, one of them sold me his old board for $25 that I still have in my garage. And I teach other veterans to surf on now as well. And they took me out. And it wasn't as much uh, teaching. You know, they weren't pushing me into waves, but they were, t these guys all knew how to surf. Good. Yeah they would take me out with them. And I had the confidence to paddle out because I knew I was with them. And I certainly was not getting good fast, but I latched onto it quickly because it was something that was absorbing a lot of this extra energy I had at the time. It was something that I could develop a new skill on and it was measurable. I could tell when I was getting better. It forced me to start learning how to research the surf report, the wind, the weather patterns, look at different surf spots, figure out when the best times of day to surf was. And all of that together 
um, really became an enjoyable experience for me. But in hindsight, it was an important thing in my life at the time that I probably needed um, right there for those few years. Yeah. Now, after that, I went on to PCS back to Georgia, Colorado, places where surfing really was impossible uh, based on where I was, but I always had an interest in it. And when I retired uh, almost a year and a half ago now um, here in Florida, I hopped right back into surfing and I really made a commitment to try to get good at it because it's like anything else, you know, the better you get at it, the more often you want to do sure. it. And that cycle is great because you're improving and you're able to see your progress and it makes you want to do it more. And I realized pretty quickly that the transition I was going through while I was retiring out of the military also provided me with some new challenges that maybe I saw some coming, maybe I didn't, but um, surfing was helping me move through those. And so the more I talk to other veterans through that period of time, still today, the more I realize a lot of guys, and when I say guys, I mean girls too, veterans. A lot of veterans are experiencing a lot of the same challenges. Remarkably, they are more similar than people realize. Right. They probably are just not talking to other veterans about them. And so they think they're unique, but it's only because they haven't been able to realize that other people are experiencing the same exact thing. Right. Um, and so, you know, when I retired and I was talking with other veterans and hearing this, I knew that surfing was um, kind of creating an outlet for me. And so uh, last summer, I invited a bunch of veterans out to the beach right here in Santa Rosa Beach. And I brought all my surfboards. A couple of other guys brought theirs. Uh, and it was bring your own everything at the time. Bring your own chow. We brought firewood out. We had a bonfire and we all met on the beach and we all surfed for a couple hours at sunset, which was awesome. And some guys caught waves. Most guys wiped out, which is fun. And we got to razz each other for that. And then we hung around a bonfire for several hours and had some really great conversations about a lot of these things that I'm talking about, which I'm going to go into deeper. And uh, I realized after that first session that our community, the veteran community needs this, especially in this part of the country. This is a really dense veteran community with six military bases within 60 miles. Um, and there are other organizations that serve to bring the veteran community together. Uh, but I think surfing is a really unique catalyst um, for a lot of purposes. Being in the ocean provides a lot of therapeutic qualities that doing other types of things don't, right? right. Like if I try to get veterans together and say, hey, let's all um, open the kimonos and talk about our problems at Starbucks while we're having a cup of coffee. It's just, it's not likely to happen, right? right? Um, but when we can spend a couple of hours or now a couple of weeks together doing something together where we're all learning something together, we're experiencing victories together, we're experiencing wipeouts together, um, we're in the ocean, which is a really fascinating therapeutic environment because it sort of neutralizes everything we're experiencing and we're in the moment together more. When we're doing these things together, it creates relationships in a short amount of time where we actually are able to talk about things uh, more openly with one another than we would otherwise. And so um, after that first session, I put together um, a plan and a great group of veterans who were willing to help support it. And we started doing these quarterly. And so for the last year, once a quarter, we meet on the beach and it's growing since then. And we have surf coaches that come in and bring um, more proper surf um, surfboards for learning, big foamy surfboards. And we put everyone in the water for two hours together. Families have been welcome for the last year as well. We do it right before sunset. We have had a bonfire company that comes in and puts on a huge bonfire, chairs, tables, a catering company brings dinner out to the beach for everyone. We have a professional surf photographer that captures videos and pictures, which you've seen as well. 
And over 150 military and veterans and their family members have come to it. And the feedback has just continued to grow about how our community needs this. They need to have uh, something that brings them together and allows them to connect and develop relationships beyond the military together. And it's been a really enjoyable experience. Um, but one and, and we've also been doing closed sessions for military organizations, by the way, they send their commanders and SELs down and we uh, put them in the water and surf together for two hours and then have a bonfire. That is a much different environment, I'll tell you. And that's been an interesting experience because when we have, you know, 50 family members on the beach around a bonfire it's pretty lighthearted. we're making s'mores we're telling jokes we're having a good time but when i had 30 jsoc uh commanders and sels around a bonfire it was it turned into unexpectedly like feedback session right. and it was really intense but i think it was a unique environment because think about all the feedback sessions that we've ever done yeah we're sitting in an office or maybe a private setting somewhere, but people were much more receptive to receiving feedback from their peers after they had just surfed together for two hours and they were hanging around a bonfire at night. And it was really a revealing uh, experience that I think a lot of organizations would benefit from, yeah. from a resilience perspective. But one of the regular comments from people who attend has been, that they want to form deeper personal connections with other veterans, but it's hard to do that when their families are with them. Right. And especially when their kids are with them on the beach and they're trying to keep their eye on everyone. And when it's one session, that's only a few hours long and it's only once a quarter. And so when I was listening to this regular feedback, I started to identify the need across our community for a, a more structured approach to helping veterans navigate these common challenges and being able to do that with each other. And that led to developing a curriculum based program and enlisting a team of all volunteer veterans uh, that was willing to develop and execute this program that we now call Surf Brigade, which I'll tell you about. But I want to press pause there and see if you have any questions about anything we've done so far. No, I think that's great. Uh, it's it's important that people realize what you're talking about. Like as far as like like when you show up with your family, like you said, not only are you trying to keep track of your kids so they don't drown or get in trouble or whatever, but it's also a fun thing. Like you don't want to take your kid to a, a solemn kind of uh, experience, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, like be quiet, son. We're talking about combat. You know, it's like. So have and this kind of it harkens back to things like um, Save a Warrior. You know, they veterans go there individually and link up with other veterans who share their common trauma. You can call it trauma, you can call it whatever you want, common experiences. And it's it's more therapeutic, it's more cathartic than it would be if you and the wife and the kids showed up. Not that you shouldn't do stuff with your family. Obviously, I'm not I'm not saying that, but I think what you're trying to say is come to this thing as more of a way to overcome any kind of battlefield trauma or any kind of things you're dealing yeah. with, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But yeah. No, that's absolutely right. And so what we've done is um, we identified the top three areas that are basically the root cause of the challenges that the veteran community faces. And we developed a task condition standard based six week curriculum around those. We, we actually have a, a military style POI um, with TCSs, ORM, communications plans, every hourly breakout of the curriculum. I don't mean to cut you off, but a lot of comments I've gotten is people that aren't in the military, uh, the, the jargon and the acronyms kind of just fly right over their head. So if you w maybe go sure. back into those and, you know, just um, say what they are, you know. Yep. Every, so everything we do in our six week program has a task condition and standard, which allows cadre as they lead this out to ensure that we identify upfront with the team that's going through the program, what the task is that we're going to accomplish at, at that session. 
We make them aware of what the conditions are, so what type of equipment is necessary, and then we identify the standard to let them know this is what we're trying to accomplish through this particular session. And that's important to identify up front because our six-week program, every session builds on it from a, a um, um, from a curriculum perspective and from a surfing perspective as well. And so we want everyone to get better at everything they're doing. And so we talk about that as well. And this is all in a point of instruction. And what that does is, um, because our program, any alumni that uh, completes the program is then qualified to be cadre for future classes as well. And so we can give them that point of instruction and they can lead future classes through this also. And that taps into all of our military experiences because it doesn't matter what service or pay grade you were when you were in the military. This is exactly the way we did things in the military. And it's a very familiar um, process for all of us. But what we've done is we've identified the three areas, the three root causes that I'm going to tell you about um, that uh, all veterans navigate. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And when I hear guys say, that's not a problem for me and it never will be, I try to kindly tell them to just stand by yeah, because right. at some point it probably will be, right. okay? Uh, for some guys, this hits them in the face real fast and real hard. For others, not so much. But um, if any one of these three things is manifesting in a veteran's life, it's going to create challenges. Two of them will be very challenging. If all three of these things are happening at once, it can be a crisis type situation that Surf Brigade right now is actually helping several veterans navigate. And I'll tell you how we do that. But these are the three things and I'll tell you why there are challenges. The first one is purpose, okay? Uh, when we served in the military, we all experienced a very intense sense of purpose. It's not common for people in their 20s and 30s to experience the type of purpose-driven life that you do in the military, especially if you are a GWAT guy. You show up to a new unit and you know immediately what the unit's mission is. You know when you're going to deploy and you know everything you have to train on to be qualified to go on that deployment. That sort of purpose is not found often across uh, the civilian uh, population and community. And one of the challenges that we experience, it's a blessing to experience that early in our life. And for a lot of civilians, other than maybe first responders or uh, um, community politician leaders, it's not common to experience that intense of a purpose for civilians. The curse of that is we take military members and we peg their purpose needle very early in life. OK, if you think about driving a race car, we redline their purpose needle. And if you're in a specialized unit for a prolonged period of time, we are asking military members to hammer the gas for years of their lives and keep that purpose needle pegged in the red zone over and over and over again. And what that does is it sets their baseline and expectations for what it means to have purpose in your life so high that when we take them off the racetrack, right? One day when we tell them, hey, you can take your foot off the gas now. It's time to go to an instructor position. It's time to go to headquarters or it's time to ETS or retire. When, that, when those RPMs come down drastically, that can leave a lot of veterans kind of feeling empty from a purpose perspective. It's not uncommon for a surf brigade to have veterans reach out and say, Everyone I work with sucks. Nobody cares about things as much as I do. They're all terrible at communications. They don't respond to my emails. They, they're, they're, they don't care. Nobody cares as much as I do where I work. And what that reveals pretty quickly is veterans are expecting to find that same sense of purpose through their work that they did when they were in the military. And unfortunately, that's not likely to happen right uh, unless you're a first responder or you're serving in the community somewhere it's not likely that you're going to find that much purpose through your career it doesn't mean that that much holistic purpose isn't available in your life it's just not going to come from a single source right and so we work on identifying that with veterans to help them understand 
you're probably unnecessarily taxing your work. And the problem with that is you're going to be continuously disappointed by it and eventually disenfranchised by it. And you're not going to enjoy it. And then you're going to be left working a job that you hate. And it's not because it's a bad job or the people are not good people, but it's because you have had unrealistic expectations yeah. of the purpose that's available through that work. Instead, you have to identify and have realistic expectations on what sort of purpose is available for you through that. And then you have to realize how much more purpose is necessary for you to be content and where else you can get that. Yeah. Okay. Other healthy environments where you can get that. Right. Okay. Because there are a lot of veterans that look for purpose in other areas and it very often leads them down the wrong paths. Yeah. Okay. This is also known sometimes as a midlife crisis. Okay. A guy says, um, I, you know, I, I need something more. And so they start making bad decisions. They start running with bad crowds. They start making selfish decisions, but we can avoid all that if we introduce purposeful things to their life in the critical moments where they need it. Yeah. And so when veterans reach out to Surf Brigade and we recognize and help them understand, you have a purpose problem. Okay, a lot of the conversations that I just shared with you, I bet you've had those too. I bet you've heard veterans say those exact same things, okay? Oh, yeah. They often think, myself, I've navigated these challenges too. They often think they're the only person experiencing a purpose problem. Right. And it's, it's not true. They're just not talking about it with other people as well. And so these are those critical moments where we see it and we go, you need something to soak up that purpose problem. Let me introduce you to surfing. Okay. Yeah. And we're not um, so dreamy that we say surfing is the solution to all your problems. Go buy a board and you, you know, you're good. What we do is we tell them about our program and we bring them onto the team and they understand that they're not the only one going through this and we help them navigate it in a long-term way. Okay. Yeah. The second problem is narrative. When we're in the military, we have a very strong narrative, okay? A narrative is a story. It's a story that explains how we fit into society. And when you're in the military, you quite literally wear a uniform that without saying anything, starts telling your narrative to other people, okay? When you and I are in uniform, when anyone's in uniform, I can look at somebody and before I ask them a single question, I can look at them and right away determine based on the patches that they're wearing, what service they're in, what command they're assigned to, what units they've been to combat with, what their advanced qualifications are. Okay. And then it goes deeper. I can tell you based on the brand of the uniform they're wearing and the boots they have on, what community they're in at that time. I can go deeper and tell you based on how they groom themselves, probably right. what units they're assigned to. And if they're in class A's, if they're in service dress, I got even more. I can tell you how many years they've been in the military, what sort of awards and decorations. I can even tell you if they're good at shooting guns. Right. Okay. <laughs> and that's before they open their mouth and I ask them a single question. Their storyline is so strong. But when we start sharing our stories with other people, especially the civilian community, in the military, it very often elicits gratitude. It elicits a lot of pride. People see you, they hear about you, and they start buying you lunch. They thank you for your service, okay? That creates an immense amount of pride in the individual, and your storyline is so strong. Your narrative is so stable. Your foundation is something that you are really familiar with. Even our families, if you ask a military spouse, tell me about your husband or your spouse, they're immediately going to tell you that they're in the military, okay? Right. Even our kids. And then one day when we're not in the military anymore, all of that is gone. And I sort of have fun 
with this sometimes <laughs> because I have a useful answer. But sometimes I ask guys a couple weeks or months after retirement, like, hey, tell me what you do now. And these are guys who for decades of their lives could answer that question in a moment's notice. And now they're stuttering over their own words. <laughs> right. You know, I had I, the job and then I and the and the and um, <laughs> ah, and they don't know what to say. Yeah. And it's not because they're not a good person. It's because they haven't taken the time to identify what their current narrative is. And they can't explain how they fit into society and that period of life that they're experiencing. The challenge with that is it can affect your confidence. It can affect your decision making. It can affect your family's confidence in you as a leader. It can affect a lot of things. And it also makes you susceptible for what we call wandering. It can leave you left wandering around looking for your new narrative. And if that's happening at the same time that you have a purpose problem, you are at risk of making bad decisions. OK. Yeah. And so, you know, when we're talking with veterans about Surf Brigade and they're determining if it's right for them and they want to get involved with our organization, these are some of the things that are very revealing and we're able to determine this guy has a narrative problem. This, this girl has a narrative problem. She doesn't know basically who she is right now. Yeah. And we know because we've been through this with so many veterans that that means they're in a period of risk in their life. And we have to help them to solidify what their new narrative is. Okay. Yeah. Because you have to know where you came from to identify where you are. And you have to know where you are if you have any hope of getting to where you want to be. Right. But if you don't know where you are right now, how can you responsibly believe that you can create a vision for the future and certainly that you have any chance of getting there? Yeah. But our program helps veterans work through that. And the third challenge is community. When we're in the military, the volume of time that we spend with the military community is extraordinarily high. <laughs> right. uh, the amount of time that we spend with people just like us is also extraordinarily high. I, I spend quite a bit of time in the local Northwest Florida um, area talking at military organizations about resilience now and about surf brigade. And I like to, point out in a room, even if, even in very diverse organizations, I like to point out and say, look around the room right now. 75% of the people in this room are within 75% of the same age as you right now. They make 75% of the same money as you. 75% of you listen to the same music. You do the same workouts. You drive the same kinds of cars. You have the same hobbies outside of work. You like to talk about the same things. Your wives and husbands all look the same. <laughs> Within 75%, you're all the same people. And that's actually really necessary because in the military, we move every couple years. And when we get somewhere new, if everybody was only 25% like us, it would be really challenging for us to move through Tuckman's ladder and get right to work. All right. And so we have to be around communities that are very familiar and similar to us so that we can get to work right away. The problem is when we're not in the military anymore and we have civilian jobs, that 75% goes way down. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you are not doing some sort of government contracting or military work and you're working in an exclusively civilian environment. When you look around the room, you realize, man, people are all different ages. You might be working with people twice your age. Everybody makes drastically different amounts of money. They have totally different hobbies, okay? People probably don't hang out together outside of work. They probably don't, at work, they don't talk about what they're doing outside of work. Right. It's a much different environment. And for a lot of veterans, 
that can create challenges. And when it does, what they do next is they start to isolate, right? They start to lose interest in their communities. They, they start to um, spend less time with other people. They say things like, uh, nobody gets me. I'm tired of trying. I'm tired of explaining myself over and over again. Okay. Yeah. I don't have anything in common with people. Why try? And then they, they become isolated. And when they become isolated, they start to get stuck in their own head. Yeah. And if that is happening, when they have a purpose and a narrative problem, the last place you want to be is stuck in your own head, ruminating on all of these things. It's a cycle, right? Right. And so when we're talking with veterans, if we identify any one of these problems, we already know this is the per- this is the program for them. If there's two, we know we need to get them on the beach. And if they've got all three things going on at once, we know we might not be able to wait until the next program uh, class goes off in six months. We need to get them in the water now. Yeah. Okay. We need to start surfing with them now. We can't wait six months to go through this curriculum with them. But these are the three areas that plague the veteran community. You can take almost any challenge that a veteran is navigating and it falls into one of these three bins, I promise you. But the good news is we literally have built a curriculum that addresses these. And what we do during our six week program is we assemble classes, teams of active duty, military and veterans only, no family members, okay? Some small exceptions, but it's not a bring your kid type thing. And we meet on the beach every Saturday morning for three hours for six consecutive weeks where we spend an hour having a cadre led guided discussion on purpose, narrative and community. And then we spend two hours in the water surfing together. Okay. And before I tell you more about that, I want to take a quick pause and see if you have any questions about the curriculum so far. No, I think it's good. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, those are things that I even I identify with that I have you know, almost a moment of clarity now talking to you about that kind of stuff. It's like, oh yeah, that's why I'm feeling that way. And we get in our own heads. And if you don't have anybody to share that stuff with, if you don't have anybody to get to express that, those thoughts to, man, they can really manifest into something huge because they're like, like I said, our minds are infinite and we can just go down these rabbit holes and yeah, getting some, getting some trouble. And I like this out the outlet of, you know, um, of the surfing thing it's like because other people find other outlets like alcohol or drugs or and i think those right. I, well, I was going to say before um it seems like those activities that you're talking about equate to combat like they're they are either dangerous they're you know not a lot of people do yeah. them and they're like there's it's one of those things there's not a whole lot of things in the civilian sector or world that can equate to that combat experience so i think that's why we kind of gravitate towards these more dangerous kind of things like you said with the motorcycle but and, you know, one of the things that surfing does is it it provides us with a lot of teaching opportunities and analogies that we can leverage in discussing our challenges, right? Yeah. Like, for example, one of them is when, when you're surfing and it's good and big waves, um, you have to paddle out through the waves, right. okay? And that requires you to punch through waves that are breaking to get to the outside. And that can be really challenging. And on a stormy day, it can be relentless. And you can continue taking waves over the head and they will hold you down and they will make you think that you can't hold your breath any longer and they'll make you want to quit and go back to shore. But if you've been taught how to navigate that, and you have an overwhelming desire to make it to the outside, you will, you'll paddle through, you'll hold your breath, you'll pop back up, you'll get back on your board, you'll punch through the waves, and eventually you'll get to the outside where now you're on the other side of those breaking waves where you can catch your breath. You can turn around and look at the same waves that were holding you under two minutes ago you're now behind them, looking at them, analyzing which one you want to ride. And so it's a matter of perspective. 
And in, and and that analogy in surfing is directly applicable to a lot of experiences that we have as veterans. There are times when we are stuck in our own heads, ruminating on a particular thought or something that we've experienced, maybe not just in the past, but it might be something we're going through in that season of life. And we just are thinking about avoiding it and quitting and going in another direction. But if we keep hammering through it, we have to have confidence that very soon we'll be able to turn around and look at it from a different angle and maybe have a ride on the same thing that we weren't sure which way was up just a few minutes ago. Right. Okay. You know, I'll give you another one. When we talk about surfing waves, when you get to the point where you can paddle into your own wave and, and surfing is unique by the way, for adults, because if someone says, I want to experience skydiving, but I don't want to go through all of the requirements to do it on my own. You can get tandem. Right. If you want to ride a motorcycle, but you don't want to learn how, you can hop on the back of one. Right. But I can't take you out surfing. The two of us are not going to get on a board. <laughs> You're the only one on that board. You have to learn how to do it and you have to do it on your own. Okay. And that's a really remarkable experience because when the day comes that you paddle into your own wave and you've worked out the timing and you pop up and you turn and you're riding down the face of a wave, nobody else has done that except for you. And the amount of natural dopamine that you will be hit with at that time is not something that you can experience otherwise. Right. I guarantee anybody who's doing that for the first time is going to be screaming like a little schoolgirl out of excitement. And those moments don't really exist anywhere else in our life. Okay. Right. The reality is all the guys that are watching you do it for the first time, they're probably going to be screaming for you too out right. of excitement, which is exactly what this is all about. But when that day comes and you're surfing, your board will go where you look. And so if you make a left-hand turn and you're looking down the face of an unbroken wave, okay, and for a moment you look towards the beach, the nose of that board is going to start coming down the wave, which is not the direction you want to go. And you have to look back up, right? You have to keep looking. Now, at the same time, we know that the wave has already broken behind us. It's crumbling. The shoulder is coming. We're trying to stay ahead of it. We're not pretending like the wave is not breaking behind us. It's actually what is generating the power that we're staying ahead of. We know it's there, but if we turn around and we look at it, the nose of our board is going to swing all the way around and we're going to totally wipe out. We've just ended a great ride and we're now stuck in the whitewash. Yeah. Okay. And that too is a lot like our military service. <clears throat> We're not pretending like those things didn't happen behind us. We know they're there. They're always kind of rumbling. It's actually what gives us a lot of power that we're staying just ahead of right now and allowing us to move into the future. But we have to look where we want to go. We have to know where we're going and look where we're going and use that power and energy to get there. Yeah. But surfing, and these are just some, some examples of all the analogies that it provides us to talk about with veterans that are helpful in and out of the water for helping them navigate these things that they're experiencing. Now, other parts of our program include battle buddies. When we meet for the first time, everybody in the program gets a battle buddy. When we were in the military, we didn't go anywhere without a battle buddy, right. okay? You had a battle buddy in your foxhole with you. You had a battle buddy when you were at the OP. You always had a battle buddy. Someone always knew where you were. You were always accountable to someone. And so in our program, we do the same. Everybody has a battle buddy. When you're in the water, you always know where your battle buddy is. You're always watching out for each other. When two guys are working on some sort of skill together, it's the battle buddies that are doing it. And between our sessions on the beach, those battle buddies are required to communicate with each other on phone, text, or meeting. Meet for coffee, meet on the beach, grab equipment and surf again on your own. But one way or the other, those battle buddies are communicating. And what that does is it gives an entire team of veterans 
six weeks together where we are having personal conversations and learning how to surf together, but it gives battle buddies a much more, a much deeper connection through that period of time. And there is a much higher likelihood that after that six week program, those guys are going to stay in touch because now they have literally talked about their purpose and narrative together and they know what each other's goals are and they know how they can help each other reach them. And they are now part of an entire community centered around surfing and they have access to equipment. They have knowledge and skill as well. And nobody that participates in this program should ever sit around and say, I don't know anybody. I People don't care. I don't have anything in common. Right. Yes, you do. You've spent six weeks developing your community and things in common with others. Now, the, the responsibility in return, the only thing we ask for guys who participate in this program is that they keep calling their battle buddy and they keep surfing together. Yeah. That's the real goal of the entire program is to build a community that as more people become part of it and go through these programs, we can all laugh, right? Not in a dismissive way, but in a, in a way with confidence that when a new veteran raises their hand and says, I'm having a problem and I'm trying to determine if Surf Brigade is right for me, that all of the alumni can immediately laugh and go, oh man, this is more for you than you know right now, okay? We've literally all been where you are right now. The good news is we've all learned how to navigate that. And you have an entire brigade here waiting to help you too. Okay. I know that sounds dreamy, but I'm telling you right now, it's already happening. I don't okay? think it sounds dreamy at all. I think it sounds great. I think that's uh, what people need. I think they're, I think this is one of, I think there should be more operations like this. I mean, this is great, man. And it's not just about surfing. Okay, surfing is great, but we can't surf every day. There aren't waves every day, certainly not in this part of the country. Right. But what this is also is an organization. This organization, veterans need this organization as well. Okay, veterans need a brigade of their own that they can be a part of and pour themselves into. As, as, we, as we say, this is our brigade. Yeah. Okay. There's no commander here. There's no SEL here. This is my brigade. It's your brigade. It's his brigade. It's her brigade. Right. This brigade is here for everybody. And for some veterans, they need something that they can volunteer their time for. Maybe that's a part of solving their purpose problem. They say, I want to help. I don't care how, tell me what you need help with. And sometimes I go, Hey man, I need like intellectual property assistance. Do you know anything about that? And the proper veteran answer that I hear every time is, I don't know anything about that, but I'm going to become an expert at it and try to be as helpful as I can. And I go, great. <laughs> and two weeks later, I got guys calling me and helping me with intellectual property challenges, right? Nice. Um, I have others who say, I want to help. I, what are you good at? I can build stuff. I go, great. Because our storage unit needs a total overhaul. Meet me on Sunday and we're going to do it tomorrow. I have an entire team of veterans that are meeting with power tools and lumber and paint, and we're going to overhaul our storage facility. Right. Um, but this organization exists for people to be a part of beyond the beach as well. And that's important. It's important for us to have a place for veterans to go um, because, you know, as much as a lot of us may say, I'll never miss the military. The reality is we all will, whether we served for two years or 22, we all will miss some aspects and the aspects of the military that we almost all miss are, is the, it's the camaraderie. Yeah. It's the um, um, mutual purpose. It's the support that we provided for each other. Um, and so we do that as well through Surf Brigade. Um, I want to pause there before I tell you, you know, some of the um, um, like company side stuff and some of the goals that we're working on now. So any of the theory type discussion, do you have any questions on any of that? 
Well, not necessarily about that, but I was well, something that is, keeps popping up in my head is you talked about how it's not just about surfing. Is it exclusively to people that are have the ability to surf, or what about veterans who maybe lost a limb or you know lost their eyesight? Or I assume it's not off limits. Can you talk a little bit about that, like how you include everyone, or do you have that Absolutely. kind of program? Yeah. Yes, this is going to lead me into the next um, point of discussion as well. Great. So the answer is everybody can surf. Anybody who wants to surf they will surf. Okay. okay? Um, we have developed some really fantastic strategic relationships um, nationwide that allow us to facilitate that. Okay. Locally, we have access to some of the best surf coaches who have already volunteered to come out and teach veterans to surf. And these are guys that are really good at surfing. Yeah. And, but they have said, I don't care if I'm pushing a guy with one leg and no arms into a wave, or I'm pushing a guy who knows how to surf and wants to go pro either way I'm there. Okay. Nice. Um, we have developed relationships with, um, electric, um, wheelchair manufacturers that build electric beach wheelchairs who have told us if anybody ever wants to come to your program and has mobility issues, we will be there with a electric wheelchair that has balloon tires on it and we'll get them wherever they need to go. That's and so awesome. there's no reason why guys don't have full access to anywhere that we go. Okay. Nice. Um, now in the water, we have developed a partnership with a surfboard manufacturer in California that is, has allowed us veterans to design our own surfboard and they are manufacturing surf brigade surfboards that are being delivered later this month um, that nice. everyone who comes to our program is going to use. These are fantastic boards. These are similar boards to what some of the largest surfboard manufacturers in the country are selling as well. But when they heard about our program, they said, hey, we're not just going to make these for um, all the big dogs in the surf industry. We're going to make them and make them available to you at cost, which is amazing. Nice. And in the future, part of our revenue generation will be selling these boards as well, right? Awesome. And these are super cool. They're all blacked out boards. You're going to see them when they come on social media. Black top, black bottom, black fins, camouflage leashes. These things <laughs> are awesome. Um, and, and we refer to them as our weapons, right? Yeah. The first surfboard we have is the M4. It's the standard <laughs> issue weapon, right. right? And we put, you know, this is the Surf Brigade logo. This is a PVC patch that's going right into the center of that surfboard, which is awesome. But what that means is Surf Brigade has a network across the surfboard manufacturing industry as well. And so the greatest challenge that I can't wait for someone to present us with is when someone says, um, I need a surfboard that is custom designed for me because I have one arm missing or no legs or a broken back. It doesn't matter what it is. We are going to navigate that and we're going to network across the surf industry and we are going to immediately redesign our boards in a short amount of time to facilitate that surf experience. And so if it means that we're putting straps on the boards, handles on the boards, different types of back ends on boards or fins or completely redesigning the board from the ground up, it's going to happen because we're going to ensure that every veteran who wants to participate in this program has total access to everything that we're doing. That's awesome. Um, now, we uh, also have developed a relationship with a national level leash manufacturer. Um, they make leashes for all of the big surf companies and they're making them for us as well with our motto, which is surfing with purpose on the leash. Um, and soon we will also have those and we will sell those in addition to the boards um, on our website also. We also sell apparel on our website, which is our primary uh, method of generating revenue right now. And we take donations also. We've had some really generous um, community members make donations. Remarkably, the largest donations that we're getting are not from the veteran community, but from total civilians that hear about what we're doing and they want to give back to the veteran community. 
and all of the money that's generated goes immediately back into this program. It allows us to buy more equipment. It allows us to um, cover our costs for storage, the website, and all of the little things as well. Nobody sure. makes any money off of this. It's all volunteers. Um, but in the future, as our resources increase, our goal is instead of us reusing our boards, which is what we have to do now so that we have equipment, um, and between surf sessions, this equipment is available for any alumni to come sign out and take surfing as well. In the future, we want to grow to where we can gift a board and leash and wetsuit to every veteran that participates in the program. And so on day one, we issue them all of their surf equipment. They use it for six weeks and then they keep it. Nice. Okay. Because a challenge afterwards if we teach somebody how to surf, we give them a battle buddy to surf with, but they don't have access to the equipment on a regular basis. It decreases the likelihood of them continuing to surf in the future. Yeah. By sending them on their way with a board, a leash, and a wetsuit, there's no reason why they can't surf every time there's waves. Right. But we have to get there from a resource perspective as well. Um, we have also developed some really great strategic relationships, um, primarily with Sound Off, which is an uh, organization that operates in the mental health um, um, realm. And what they do for us is uh, if somebody is a part of our program and is navigating a real um challenge that is beyond what our curriculum is designed to address at that time, we now have access to um, mental health providers uh, that are available totally anonymous and at zero cost to the military and veteran community. And so any problem that we're presented with, we are now um, capable of fielding and bringing in expert assistance with as well. And once they have moved through that with expert assistance, we get them right back into our program and we help them move on through our curriculum to help them get in formation with the rest of the brigade. Nice. Okay. That's amazing. Now, in the future, short term, <clears throat> what we're what we're doing now is we run two classes per year, one in the fall, one in the spring. Our next class starts on October 7th and it graduates on November 11th, which is Veterans Day, which is super cool. Nice. And then we will run another one in February through March. What we require is that anyone who participates in this program will make the maximum effort to be at every single session so that they get the full experience of the curriculum. In fact, we even have them sign an accountability contract before they come, making a commitment to everyone else who is in the program as well. Um, we are also raising funds, uh, as I mentioned, through selling apparel, shirts, hats. Um, we even have a book on how to surf and surf therapy. We sell stickers and other things as well. And soon we will also, uh, also start to sell our surfboards and leashes, which I think um, will grow uh, as word gets out as well. But our goal, as I mentioned, is to generate an increasing amount of revenue through those sales to be able to um, uh, issue equipment to veterans participating in this program. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Midterm goals, uh, we are going to start to have a surf brigade presence at uh, regional events like surf competitions, so we can spread the word about what we're doing across the veteran surf community. Uh, we also hope that podcasts like this will help spread the word to a larger community beyond just the Emerald Coast of Florida. Um, and soon we will also start hosting our own uh, military surf competition. Uh, and that's, that won't be designed to be really competitive necessarily, but instead to bring the veteran and military community together. <clears throat> this is something we'll have some fun categories in. We'll have a good time surfing on the beach. Maybe some other veteran owned businesses want to sponsor it 
and allow us to give out cool prizes, right? Like first place prize gets a new surfboard. Okay. Yeah. Second place prize gets a two court canteen. <laughs> right. right. Um, but in reality, it'll be good stuff. Sure, um, sure. And what it will do is um, bring awareness to what we're doing is the most important thing. Right. Um, other midterm goals, the surf brigade is working with a team of clinical experts. And in the future, we are going to identify a veteran or a group of veterans that are willing uh, voluntarily to go through a process of identifying before participating in the program um, where they where they are in terms of these challenges we're discussing um, and how we can measure those and capture them from a data perspective. Yeah. Okay. These might go deeper into areas like PTSD, depression, and anxiety. But if we're able to clinically capture um, where they are before participating in the program, we will then also measure their progress during the program and after the program and then long after the program, as long as they continue surfing with their battle buddies in the future. And that will allow us to really zero in our curriculum, but also identify the, the quantifiable impacts that surf therapy is having on the veteran population. And what we'll do then is publish that into a readable book that the entire military and veteran, the entire country can read to understand how this program is beneficial and maybe um, entice more veterans to participate in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, realistically, not everybody will want to read a long book about that. And so one of our other midterm challenges is once we've captured that data, we'd also like to turn it into probably a 30 minute documentary. All right. That's the right amount of time where with a talented film crew, uh, we can follow those that same veteran or veterans through this program yeah okay we can talk to them beforehand we can watch them the first time they paddle out and trying to catch a wave and all the wipeouts <laughs> right like a baby draft trying to stand up for the first time all right okay and we can follow their progress six weeks six months later and see them actually improving at surfing but more importantly see them improving at navigating all of these challenges that they came into the program with. And if we can share that documentary with the whole country, then I think more veterans will understand like, man, the things they're experiencing are not unique. It's just unique to them because they haven't realized yet that other people are as well, but this is all here waiting for them. Okay. Yeah. Our challenge then as the demand grows will be to present this program in other places as well. Right. And so in the future, surf brigade will have battalions in other locations, East coast, West coast. Okay. We will have companies under those battalions as well that maybe meet every month for a paddle out and we'll have platoons of veterans that meet outside of organized events and paddle out, okay? And when everybody that ever comes through the program gets their blacked out board with the surf brigade patch in the middle and they're surfing all over the country, what that does is we're going full circle here, okay? Back to when you see a guy in uniform and you know a lot about him without him ever opening his mouth, when a surfer sees another surfer with a surf brigade surfboard, he knows that guy went through the program. And I know what I went through when I went through the program and we got each other. Okay. That's where we're going to get in the future. It doesn't matter where you are. When you paddle out and you see that board, you know, man, that's my battle buddy right there. 
okay? <laughs> when you're out in the community and you're maybe navigating something, okay? You're taking waves over the head, but you're not saying anything to anyone. And you see someone else wearing surf brigade shirt, you know, man, that's my battle buddy right there, okay? And so nobody should ever feel like they're alone. Nobody should ever feel like they're the only one experiencing or navigating these things because we all are. Right. We're just talking about it and we're navigating it together. Over. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. It's phenomenal, man. That. Yeah, I love the, the vision that you have. I love how you, you want to take it to the next level. Hey, you might have to have a surf division or a surf, surf core sometime to, to yeah. <laughs> capitalize on the... On the numbers, yeah. What I'll also tell you, for privacy purposes, we won't, you know, discuss the finer details, but I can assure you that we have veterans that when they hear about what our curriculum is designed to address, they reach out to Surf Brigade and are vulnerable with us and share with us the things that they're navigating and they're serious, man. Yeah. Like we have guys who reach out to us and tell us like, I'm, I'm suicidal. I've done all the things that I'm supposed to do. I've done all the therapy. I've done the medications. Okay. And I have had an unsuccessful suicide attempt and I don't know what else to do, but I'm willing to try this. Yeah. Right. And when we hear that, we immediately identify, you know, if this is a crisis situation, we bring in our expert backup, but we're also going to get you in the water as fast as we can, man. And that's, you know, a far end of the spectrum, but we have other guys who are reaching out and sharing things with us that a lot of guys who we know, guys who are just like us might not say these things otherwise right but they're real and they're really there it's like that whitewash okay yeah you might you you might not look at it but it's there okay um and so i don't believe that any of this is dreamy i believe that surf brigade believes that this is necessary for sure um and it's all here waiting for everyone who wants to be a part of it. I think it's, I think and, it's a perfect thing for people that are, like you said, they're trying to find their way through life, but meanwhile, they're muddling through and they're like, oh, someday I'll get over this. They're stuck in the whitewash. Get over it now. Just find something now. And this is a perfect avenue to find that purpose, to just to get in the water and do something that's going to help them move forward with their life, you know, and stop just going through the motions. I mean, I think that's, that's key. It's, it's exactly right. It's like surfing. Yeah. If you, if you think you're sitting on the beach all by yourself, you're not. If you, if you think you're stuck in the whitewash and you don't know which way is up and you're thinking about just quitting and going back to the beach, don't. Okay. There's an entire group of guys that have started on the beach. They paddled out through the whitewash and they're sitting on the outside catching awesome waves yeah. and they're all just waiting for you to get out there also right as soon as you make the decision to be a part of this they're all going to be a part of your experience from getting off the beach and getting out here and catching these waves all you have to do is raise your hand reach out and say i'm in it's all here waiting for you well speaking of that what's a good way to get a hold of you what uh like you run down the, the social media or the contact info website. Absolutely. Surf, <clears throat> Surf Brigade official on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. That's monitored all the time by um, a team. Our website is surfbrigade.org. You can find out all tons of information on the website as well as buy apparel and make donations there as well. And you can also sign up for our program there um, also. But if anybody just wants to kick tires and see if this is right for them, reach out on the website via email, okay? Info at surfbrigade.org on social media. Ask questions. Tell us what you're going through and we'll help you decide 
if this is right for you or not. If it's not, we'll help you connect with another veteran organization that maybe is. But those are the best places to get in touch with us. Awesome. This has been great, man. I love the another avenue for veterans who are struggling. Uh, I love there's another avenue for them to go to because a lot of times they'll they'll see something that, that maybe the horse therapy or something else, and they're just like, that's not for me. This is another thing they could try, like you said, kick the tires a little bit and see if you like it. This is awesome, man. I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate your effort. I mean, we're a big advocate on this podcast for places for veterans to go to get healthy, to get a purpose-driven life, and uh, this is definitely one of them for sure. Serving in the military, the narrative of it, it's really an enjoyable experience to a lot of people because it's why they make movies about it. They write books about it. You're away. You miss people. It, it creates this feeling for longing and then the reunification that the parts of life that it allows you to experience that you wouldn't otherwise. And, you know, so sometimes when guys are out of the military and they're, and they're having problems, I tell them, you got a broken heart, dude. <laughs> like, right. I think you miss the romantic aspects of the military. Oh, for sure. And, and you got a broken heart. The good news is, let me introduce you to your new romance. <laughs> it's surfing. It's going to make you feel young again. It's exciting. It's going to hold your attention. Okay. It's something you can really pour yourself into and it's healthy in so many ways. Yeah. And so it fills those voids for a lot of veterans that they might not otherwise. Right. Yeah, All man. Right. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I love it. I, I love this idea and I, I hope uh, a lot of guys take advantage of it. I think you have a good program. You're obviously, you're, you know, you're one of those dudes I've always uh, admired and your attention to detail. This is a great thing. I hope people take advantage of it. Hell yeah. You too. Well, listen, brother, I appreciate the platform here to share this with others. Definitely. And thanks for what you're doing, man. I mean, this podcast probably, if, if you haven't talked about this, probably gives you some purpose. For sure. 100%. And, and a narrative. And a, you're building a community, you know? That's also like, it's kind of like surfing. Like, maybe those guys who are like, that's not for me you might not be able to say to them like, Hey man, this podcast isn't actually about the podcast. <laughs> right. They might not get it at that time, but I think a lot of us hopefully might understand like, dude, being on the podcast and listening to the podcast, it's not just about the stories. It, it's about much more than that, but you have to be willing to receive that for it to really have a benefit to you for sure yeah a lot of guys come on here and, and have some really good information on what like kind of like what you said like we're all going through the same stuff sometimes we just need to hear one of our buddies say it and just to identify oh yeah that's i'm also going through that oh this guy sought help i think i can do the same thing i hope it i hope it helps people kind of grow and get better you know i mean that's, that's what it's all about you know i just i hate the the thought of somebody who's just out there struggling and just trying to you know, like you said going through the just getting pounded by the waves day after day. If this can help them in some way or Surf Brigade can help them in some way, I hope it does. I mean, I, I, I want Absolutely. guys to understand it's it's in their control. They can do it. They just got to reach out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, brother. All right, man. Well, let me know what I can do for you. Sounds good. All right, All man. Right. I hope you have a kick-ass weekend. Yeah, you too.